the challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was returning to Dawson City from a northern patrol. White Eagle, an Indian guide, was with him. The early darkness was settling over the snow-covered land, and the dogs raced ahead over the smooth trail, knowing they were nearing home. Suddenly, the Mountie's big lead dog, King, stopped in his tracks on the trail ahead, and the dog team behind him almost piled up in their traces. King, what's wrong with you? Get back there, Jinx. You, Carlo, get your foot out of that strap. White Eagle, here, help me get these dogs untangled. Uh, Come around, Get over, Sheba. Stop, Jack. What? There's a dog coming out of the woods. Oh, that's why King stopped. Him here, dog. That's Rex. Ezra Bailey's dog. Ezra lives back there with his partner. Oh, him plenty excited. Maybe Ezra's in trouble. Come on, White Eagle. We'll follow him. King, stay here and guard the team, boy. Rex wanted us to follow him, all right. Oh, look. That smoke. That's what's wrong. Hurry. Their cabin's on fire. Ezra must be in it. The cabin roof going to fall. There's Ezra. He's carrying Bill. Hurry, Ezra. That rope. Hurry, White Eagle. They didn't get out. Oh, it's fall on them. Oh, this heat's awful. Here, pull this plank off. Now, grab Ezra. He's right at the edge. I'll get Bill. Uh, I got him. Carry the back. Here. This is far enough. Put him down here beside Bill. Oh, them plenty hurt. Yes, he's still alive, though. Oh, that board hit Ezra right on the forehead. Oh, it's good we come along. Well, we can't do anything for them here. Let's take them back to my sled. There's a medicine kit on it. We'll get them to town as soon as possible. Come along, Rex. You bring Bill, White Eagle. The following morning, Ezra and Bill lay on two cots in a small cabin that belonged to Pierre Ledoux, who owned the trading post. Ezra's head and eyes were bandaged, but Bill lay propped against some blankets as he talked to Pierre. How did your cabin catch fire? What happened? I got the stove going too well. Ezra was still working at the mine, and... I went home to warm the place up and get supper. I was tired and lay down on the bed and went to sleep. When Ezra come home, the cabin was full of smoke. It was a narrow squeak for us. If it hadn't been for Preston, we'd be cooked by now. Does your head still pain a lot, Ezra? Uh, just when I move it. When is Sergeant Preston coming back? He go with doctor after doctor fix your eye. I guess he wanted to talk to him. Is Rex all right? <laughs> he is right beside your bed, Ezra. He will not leave. Uh, good old fella. Come on, boy. I guess I'm strong enough now to pat your head if you put it up here. Oh, there is Sergeant Preston. Hello, boy. Ezra was just wondering when you come back. Uh, did you talk to the doctor, Sergeant? Why, yes, I did. But what did he say? How's the pain in your head, Ezra? It's, it's lots better, eh? Hey? I feel stronger now. I, I want to know what the doctor said, Sergeant. Ezra, I know you want the truth. Yep. Yep, I do. The doctor told me to use my own judgment about telling you because I knew you so well. Is it... Is it bad, Sergeant? Yes, I'm sorry to say it is. You... You don't have to tell me. I guess I knew it all the time. I'm going to be blind. Yes, Ezra. Blind? Sucker of blood. It's a hard thing to face, Ezra. And it's all my fault. It's on account of me that he's never going to see again. Bill, it's nobody's fault. Don't you go blaming yourself. But I have some good news, too. All the boys in town are getting together to build a new cabin for you. And by the time you're better, you can move right in. Ah, oh, that is good. That's mighty nice of them. Too bad this had to happen just when you two were beginning to get some gold out of that claim of yours. Hey. I guess I won't be much help now. Don't you worry, Ezra. I'll do work enough for the both of us. I owe you my life, and from now on, it it belongs to you. You'll always have me and that dog of yours. 
Rex and I will take care of him. Bill kept his word to Ezra. Through the following months, he worked hard at the mine, and the rich vein of gold he uncovered swelled their account at the bank. In the meantime, Sergeant Preston helped to train Ezra's dog, Rex. He did it with the aid of his big dog, King. Rex is a smart dog, Ezra. When he sees King do something, he wants to do it, too. It's not hard to train him. Uh, he's learned to bring me all my clothes, and he leads me around town. Uh, I don't need eyes when I have Rex with me, do I, boy? There's uh, one more thing I want to train him to do. Me what's that? Well, he knows my name now, but I want him to learn where to come if you ever need me. Well, teach him to come to the police barracks. Oh, gosh, Sergeant, I'd like that. You know, I'd feel a lot safer if I knew I could get you any time I wanted to. Good. We'll do that right away. It was about a month later that Sergeant Preston was leaving the office of Inspector Grayson at Mounted Police Headquarters when he heard a bark. King whined as he saw Rex approaching. What is it, King? Oh, it's Rex. There must be something wrong. Come on, King. Ezra, Ezra, are you all right? Oh, Sergeant, I'm sure glad Rex found you. It's, it's Bill, Sergeant. I'm worried about him. He went hunting yesterday morning and didn't get back. What well, did he say he'd get back last night? Yes, he didn't have any supplies with him. Maybe he stayed in somebody else's cabin. Oh, it ain't like Bill. He, he's careful about not worrying me. I depend on him so much. Do you know where he went? He said he was going to Indian Lake. Well, give me something of Bill's, a shirt or something he's worn. His clothes are hanging right over his bed, I think. Yes, there's a flannel shirt. What, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to look for Bill, Ezra. King can get his scent from this shirt. We'll start right now. Come along, King. It was hours later. Sergeant Preston and King had almost circled Indian Lake and the big gray dog zigzagged back and forth through the snow. Suddenly, Sergeant Preston heard him bark far ahead. Did you find him, boy? Bill! Bill, are you all right? What is it, King? Did you find him? Why, Bill! Bill! Oh. He's dead. His foot caught in a bear trap. Oh, poor Bill, he froze to death. We gotta take him, boy. Home, King. A few days later, Ezra sat alone in his cabin with Rex beside him. The dog whined sympathetically as he noted the sorrow in his master's voice. Well, Rex, I guess you're all a good lift now that Bill's gone. I don't know how we're going to get along without him. I'm sure thankful I got you, though, fella. I'd be mighty helpless without you. It... Oh, 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 oh. Who, who is it? It's Preston, Ezra. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Find a chair and sit down. Thanks. Hello, Rex. King, down here beside me, boy. I uh, brought you some news, Ezra. You did? We went over Bill's papers and bank account. He left everything to you. He did? Hey, poor Bill, I, I'm sure going to miss him. Bill didn't have any relatives, did he? No, we've been partners a long time, and I guess I was closer to him than anybody. Did you know how much gold he was getting out of your mind? Well, Bill said he was doing right well with it. He asked me once if I'd like to move to the States, but I told him no. You see, I can find my way around here now. I know every inch of this cabin, and I know where things are in town. You see, I'd, I'd be afraid in a strange place. I guess that's why Bill never told you how wealthy you were. Wealthy? Bill had over $50,000 in gold. He could have gone out into the world and lived very comfortably. But he didn't go because he thought you couldn't do without him. I, I wouldn't have let him stay here if I'd have known. I guess Bill knew that. But because he thought that he was the cause of your losing your eyesight, he felt responsible. It was an accident. I never blamed Bill. No, but he always blamed himself. Anyway, you're a rich man, Ezra. You'll never have to worry about supporting yourself. You think you'll stay here in Dawson? I'd never leave here, Sergeant. I can find my way around. Rex knows every story in town. He can take me anywhere I tell him to. Hey, he's as good as a pair of eyes. No, we wouldn't like a city. 
would be boy. You see, Lexi's never been in one, and he's worth more to me than all the money in the world. Nope. We're staying here in Dawson. The following day, two men were buying supplies in Pierre Ledoux's trading post. One was a slim man with a black beard. The other, a big half-breed. Pierre had never seen them before. Uh, you are newcomers in Dawson, yes? I have not seen you before. Yeah, we just got here. You are a prospector? Oh, we're trying to be. Uh, how much are these shovels? Well, over here I have some better ones. Uh, oh, hello, Ezra. Hello, Pierre. Uh, take me to the county, Rick. Hey, take a look. That man is blind. Uh, dog, lead him. Uh, no, here, here is better shovel. <laughs> Let's say it. While you look at it, I wait on Ezra. Something for you, Ezra? Well, I need some tobacco, Pierre. Oui. Oh, <laughs> that Rex he is one fine dog. <laughs> well, Ezra, I hear about what good fortune you have now. You are now a rich man. Yes, but I sure miss Bill. You don't know where uh, I can get an Indian or someone to cook for me, do you? Oh, it is hard to find someone like that. Everybody look for gold. Uh, maybe someone will come in store who want job, and then I send him to you. You see, Bill did the cooking for us. I've been eating at the cafe lately, but during this cold weather, I'd like to have supper cooked in the cabin. But here, here is your tobacco. Uh, nice dog you got there, mister. Uh, Rex is the best friend I got. Rex, he is smart animal. He is Ezra's eyes. I'll say he is. I couldn't get along without him. Could I, boy? Did you train him yourself? A mountie helped me. This dog's been right at my side since the day I went blind. He knows just about everything I say to him. Are you lucky? Well, put that tobacco on my bill, Pierre. Yeah. Let's go, Rex. Goodbye. If I hear someone to work for you, I send him. Thank you, Pierre. <laughs> Does uh, he live around here? Just outside the town. Uh, how does he earn a living if he can't see? He has plenty money. His partner die and leave him very rich. Hey, you you want that shovel? It's ten dollar. Ah. Sure costs a lot of money to live up here. Yeah, I'll take it. That's all I want. Yeah. Hey, you you don't want more supply? We'll come back again for him. Come on, take it. Au revoir. Where did that blind man go? Why, you want him? I got an idea. There he is. Come on, we're following him. I want to find out where he lives. You want to talk to him now? Not today. Tomorrow, you go and offer to work for him. Work for him? He didn't hear your voice in the store. You go and tell him that storekeeper sent you. Why you want me work for him? I think I know how we can get enough money to get back to the States and get started up in business. And we won't have to work very hard for it. You mean rob him? No. He don't keep money lying around in his cabin. You heard him tell Pierre to charge his tobacco. He don't even carry money on him. Then how we get money? You're going to get friendly with that dog. Oh, that dog. him fierce looking. He'll like you well enough if you feed him well. Give him the best meat you can get. Then what? Then we're going to steal him. That old man will pay plenty to get him back. Look, he's turning off the trail. Him live in cabin. There. Back in woods. That's just what we want. No neighbors around to ask questions and find out what we're doing. Now, tomorrow, you get that job. Oh, 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 oh. Come in. Uh, down, Rex, down, I say. Who is it? Me. Here you want someone to cook. Me, take a uh, Yes. I suppose Pierre sent you. Uh. Me, good cook. Me, take care of cabin. Well, be still, Rex. Hey, don't be afraid of Rex. He's not dangerous. Why him growl like that? Well, I guess it's just because he doesn't know you. Now, Rex, be still. Well, how soon can you start to work, Tic Hag? Me start right now, maybe. Well, that'll be just fine. And I know if Pierre sent you, you're all right. Maybe if me feed dog, him be friendly. Gee, that's a good idea. Go on back in the storeroom and get him some meat. 
You might as well start right away. For three days, Takak worked for Ezra, cooking his food and making friends with Rex, who gradually began to accept him. Ezra was very contented. It was night, and Ezra was sleepy. Uh, I'm going to turn in, Takak, in time. Be a time for bed. It was a mighty good supper tonight. I'm sure glad Pierre found you for me. I'm glad you like food. You gave Rex his supper, didn't you? Yes, me feed him. You know, I'm, I'm glad he's getting friendlier with you. It's uh, funny how long it took. A dog may be afraid I hurt you. Yeah. Well, I guess you better take him out for a while. I'm going to bed. Me take him out. Me get Parker. Come, Rex. I'll go with take care, Rex. I'll be sound asleep by the time you get back. Rex, come on. Come along. You want your food, you follow me. You be quiet. You hungry, huh? You come back in woods, you get supper. Stop it. Here, here's a piece of meat. That you, take it. Quiet, here is meat. Here is dog, Buck. Feed them all, Elite. I got a dog team waiting. Here's a muzzle and a leash and some rope. Blind men sleep. Him not wake up till morning. Good. Now, tomorrow morning, when you go to his cabin, you say this note was under the door. Pretend to look for the dog. Here's the paper. What note say? Uh, can you read? No. Well, there's nothing on it that, that'll get us into trouble. If he wants it, give it to him so he'll know there is a note. Uh, tell him the note says to leave $10,000 at the bridge on Moose Creek if he wants his dog back. You let dog go back if he gives money? I don't know. Maybe if we let the dog go back to him, he won't tell anybody. Maybe we'd better say in the note that if he ever tells the police, we'll kill the dog, even after he gets him back. <laughs> that good idea. You think Ezra let me take money? He'll have to. He can't bring it himself, he can't see, and he won't have his dog. Now remember to say he's to leave the money at Moose Creek, that's east of here. In case he does tell somebody, that's the place they'll watch. But you bring the money to our cave in the hills west of here, and I'll be waiting with our team. Maybe it'd be better if I go to town with money first. Then my trail will be covered. Good idea. Yeah, the dog's through eating. Come on, help me get him tied up. Ezra usually awoke before Takak arrived each morning. When he opened his eyes, he always groped for the head of his big shepherd dog at the side of his cot. And when he felt the warm tongue of Rex licking his hand, he felt safe and secure. This morning, however, he sat up with a start, his voice growing panicky. Rex! Rex, where are you? Rex! Rex, boy! My shoes, where... Here they are. Rex! Take heck! Oh, 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 Rex! Take heck! The meat come. Something wrong? Oh, you must have come early. You, you took Rex out, eh? I didn't know where he was. Me just come now. Door was open. Me not see Rex. You mean you didn't take him out this morning? No. Me leave him in the house last night after you sleep. And did you say the door wasn't shut? And this door opened just a little this morning. And, and he could have got out himself. Look outside, take care. Me not see him around when I come. But there must be some tracks in the snow. There's snow last night, no track around here. But he wouldn't run away. He Wait, there's something on the floor. Paper with writing on it. Writing? Can you read it, take care? I... If only I could see uh... Me can read it. What does it say? Quick, tell me. It say, leave $10,000 in gold under Moose Creek Bridge uh... and your dog will come back. Uh... If you tell police before or after dog come back, your dog gets shot. Give me that note, take Ack. Let me read it. If only I could see. Take Ack. Get Parker. Those dirty rats, those weasels taking Rex from me. He's my eyes. I must get him back. There you, Parker. You tell police. No, no, I can't take a chance. I must get Rex back. If they shoot him, I, I might as well be dead. You'll have to take me to town to get the money. It's all in the bank. 
Then you bring me back here and take the gold out to Moosehead Creek. Me do that. And let's hurry, take care. I'm afraid they might hurt Rex. Sergeant Preston walked along the main street of Dawson City with his dog King at his side. As he approached the bank, he noticed Ezra walking toward him, led by Takak. Well, hello there, Ezra. Hi, uh, it's Sergeant Preston. How are you? I'm getting along fine. Good. Why, uh, where's Rex? This is the first time I've ever seen you without him. Uh, something's wrong with him. Oh. He, uh, he's sick. I, I left him home. Has he been sick long? No, no, just this morning. I'm, I'm getting along fine, Sergeant. Uh, Pierre sent Tic-Tac to me. He, he's a good cook. We'll make it out all right. Well, we got to get home now. I, I'm in kind of a hurry. It was a few hours later. Ezra sat alone in his cabin, puffing nervously at his pipe. In his hand, he held the note that Tic-Tac had given him. They should be back by this time. Oh, Rex boy. They just have to bring you back to me. Hey, Cack. Is that you? It's Preston, that's right. Oh, yes. I uh, got to thinking about Rex after I saw you. Perhaps I better have a look at him. Where is he? Uh, well, that's nice of you, Sergeant. He's... Uh, Ezra, you're in trouble. What is it? No, Sergeant. I... That is... Go on, Ezra. What's wrong? Where's Rex? And where's that half-breed who was with you today? Hey, I can't tell you, Sergeant. Now, please go away. I can't tell you. You, uh, dropped this piece of paper. I, I did. Sergeant, give it to me. Why? But, well, I suppose you've read it by now. Read it? They'll kill Rex if they find out you know about it. Now, please leave me. Don't do anything about it. Who gave you this note, Ezra? Someone put it under the door after they stole Rex. Tay found it. Did Tay read it to you? Yes. I sent him to Moosehead Creek hmm. with the money, just the way the note said. Ezra, there's nothing on this paper but scribbling. Whoever sent this note probably couldn't write. But, but Tay read it to me. Tay was in on this scheme. I saw Pierre after meeting you this afternoon. He told me he hadn't sent anyone out here to work for you. You mean Tay helped steal Rex? Of course he did, Ezra. He didn't take that gold to Moosehead Crossing at all. He went off with it. He said it was written on the note that if I told the police, even after getting Rex back, that the dog would get shot. That's why I couldn't tell you, Sergeant. That may mean that you will get Rex back. What? Sergeant, that's Rex. I, I know he's Mark. Yes, it's Rex, all right. Rex, old fella. Oh, you can back. Hello, boy. You all right? They haven't hurt him any. But I'm going to catch the devils who did this if it takes the rest of my life. Maybe you'd better not, Sergeant. Anyone mean enough to do a thing like this is capable of anything. I'll get them. But how can you? Rex's trail is fresh. I'll take King and backtrack him. I can pick up Takak's trail from there. I'll see you later, Ezra. Sergeant Preston, alone with King, backtracked on Rex's trail. The dog had come over hills and gullies, across frozen streams and through woods to get back to his master. In places, the crust was hard on the snow, and the wind had blown across it until it was hard and shiny. But the big gray dog king kept on the trail, the mountie close behind him. It was dark when they stopped near the foot of a mountain. My king. Quiet, fella. Take it easy. Ah, yes. Here's their trail leading north. They have a dog team. Well, king, I guess we're going to have to travel after dark. We won't catch them if we wait till morning. All right, king, let's go, boy. After them, king! Buck and Takak had camped between two large rocks on the trail that led to the border. A bright moon lighted the snowy plain so clearly that objects could be seen as easily as if it were midday. Takak was worried. Uh, bad we stop. Maybe someone come. Ah, relax, Takak. That old man won't tell anybody about his dog. He'll be too scared. It better we not let dog go back. It's better this way, I tell you. If we didn't send the dog back, he'd report us to the Marty's. This way, he won't say anything. That Mountie we meet on street today, him Sergeant Preston, him got big gray dog, plenty smart, they say. Him good friend of Ezra. Well, you can stew around all you like. I'm going to sleep. Me watch trail, you sleep. Then you watch trail. Get up on that rock and take a look. You can see for miles, it's all clear. 
We gotta get an early start tomorrow. If we both sleep now, we can start earlier. Let me stand up, Rock, and look. I don't see why you're worried. They won't know which way we've gone, even if they do find out what we did. Buck. What? Someone come on trail. You sure? Man come with dog. Get down. Can't see our fire. It's behind these rocks. Maybe it's just some prospector who lives around here. Him big man and that big dog. Maybe Mounty and that big dog he got. We can't take any chances. There's nothing to protect him. No trees or rocks. Give me that gun. Yeah. Here, right there. I'll get around the edge of the rock. You see him yet? Yeah, I see him. Looks as if he's stopping. Guess he spotted these rocks and knows he's a good target. You can hit him from here? It's a tough shot, but I can't wait. Him fall. I got him. Now for his dog. It's right beside him. You hit dog, too. Him fall down beside man. Well, I guess that's shooting for you. Come on, let's have a look at him. Maybe him not mounted. Well, if he isn't, maybe he'll have something in his pockets we can use. Come on. Sergeant Preston lay sprawled on his face in the snow, and the moonlight shone brightly on the silvery fur of the big dog that lay on its side near the Mountie's head. As Buck and Takak grew closer, Buck laughed. <laughs> Glad I didn't have to waste any more bullets. Them dead, you think? And if they aren't, they're close to it. I'll turn this man over and we'll see if he's a Marty. Hold his gun. As Buck bent over Sergeant Preston, the Mountie suddenly sprang up, giving him a smashing blow that knocked him backwards into the snow. At the same instant, the big gray dog king leaped to Takak, who held the gun, and the two of them rolled in a snarling, screaming heat. Take dog off! Stop. All right, King. Back, fella. I've got a gun. Get up, take hack. And you, too, whoever you are. Oh, my God. Who are you? Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. I am arresting you for extortion and attempted murder. Them shots, they missed. I must have hit the dog. No, you didn't. I knew it would fool you if you thought so, though. Him pretend, too. King isn't called the smartest dog in the Yukon for nothing. We work as a team. King's worth two men. I'd have suspected something like this if it hadn't been for that dog. I ought to let him tear you to pieces for your part in this business of robbing a helpless blind man. Get together. I'm handcuffing you. We'll go back and get your dog team. Watch them, King. <coughs> yes, King, old boy. Thanks to you, this case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon is a copyrighted feature, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Here's an important announcement. Beginning Saturday, November 1st, and every Saturday thereafter, the Challenge of the Yukon will be heard at 7.30 over most of these ABC stations. Remember the change of time. The Challenge of the Yukon, beginning November 1st, every Saturday at 7.30. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Starting next Thursday, be sure to hear Treasury Agent at this time, exactly one half hour earlier than its usual time. Treasury Agent is the exciting show that dramatically tells of the work of Treasury Agents who have outwitted some of the country's most dangerous criminals. Go along with the Treasury Agents as step by step they <coughs> entangle every complicated case. And don't forget, Treasury Agent moves to a new time next week. Beginning next Thursday and every Thursday from then on, Treasury Agent will be heard at this time one half hour earlier than its usual time. Treasury Agent is broadcast over most of these ABC stations. The Challenge of the Yukon, usually heard at this time, moves to Saturday night at 7.30, beginning Saturday, November 1st. Follow the adventures of the great dog King and Sergeant Preston as they meet the Challenge of the